The dollar is this wrecking ball going around the world at the moment, mm. and it's hitting emerging market, emerging market, emerging markets. Mm. I, we've seen Argentina. We're now watching Turkey very carefully this morning. That that dollar wrecking ball. How do the Chinese view it? How I, they they have protections in place. If we were to see this kind of escalating into something more significant for emerging markets, how will the Chinese authorities play it? Well, China's in an interesting position at the moment where it's actually insulated itself fairly well. If you look at the, the so the balance of payments, is actually its position for Forex on you know, basically how much money it has to um, use to offset inflows or outflows is at zero at the moment yep. on a 12-month basis. This is a really rare event and it indicates that basically you've got the sort of inflows in terms of the trade surplus, um, um, direct investment into China is being balanced off by what is, has been a very restricted outflow. Um, so basically, China's managed to insulate itself against a lot of the dollar strength and also the interest rates, whereas in previous times when you've had the spreads between the two markets shrink to, I mean, they're currently about 60, 63 basis points, you've seen really, really, that's when you've seen the, the currency come under a lot of pressure back in 2015-16. Any, any other steps they might take to, if this were to escalate further? Um, the thing is that they, they can, so as long as they keep um, the capital controls in place, so therefore not, not loosen yeah. up completely, so that's one thing. Um, but the other thing is, it's the, the big thing is the switch in the bond market. So you have about seven, eight billion um, every month going into China's bond markets because they opened them up back yep. in sort of two years ago. Now, if you think that so the trade surplus is averaging about 30 billion, so an additional seven, eight billion, so that goes into China, that, that yeah. protects the, the, the currency and their own balance of payments position. So not only is money going into China, but also it's not going out. So China's no longer buying foreign assets. So it's almost like a double, a yep. double effect. So you have a double insulation. And it's, 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 not a, it's, not, it's not based on interest rates, it's not based on market prices, but it's based on basically a structural shift out of global markets by the Chinese and foreigners going into the Chinese market. And this is a massive, a massive change. And that means that China doesn't get affected so badly as the other emerging markets. OK, but it's still being affected, Dan. So is there a way that actually they can temper in a kind of part of trade negotiations? The Chinese for a long time have been wanting to have a new reserve currency. And I know that's near impossible, mm -hmm. but 10, 15 years down the road, can that change? Uh, well, you know, it's a, a quite far horizon to be predicting. Uh, I think a lot of it will depend on exactly this point around the capital controls. To get to that point, you need to have an economy that's much more integrated. And I think that at least the lesson perhaps that China has drawn uh, over the last 10 or 15 years from the Asian financial crisis was much more around the advantages of having a control over capital flows as opposed to what we saw in Asia when the dollar swung around and what that did to the domestic yeah. sectors in these countries. So I think their lesson is, no, we like controls for now. Uh, we would like to get to uh, international reserve currency, but it's not exactly clear how you balance the risks uh, from the open capital account that that would entail. Uh, Miranda, what happens to ZTE? I mean, we have the latest story basically saying, it, you know, it's facing at least uh, $3 billion in losses from this technology ban from the U.S. Yeah, I mean, but there seems to be sort of the loosening. The, I mean, the, the position at the moment, if they change the management, have a fine, then, then basically it can be, it can be accommodated. Um, so in the short term, it may be able to get back on its feet, obviously suffering quite significant losses in the short term. But then longer term, th th this is then sort of China then it becomes a protected company within the Chinese system because obviously China is going to push forward its own domestic technology as a result of this this threat. Yeah. So, so, so therefore, sort of the um, things like uh, you've seen the comments from Lenovo about wanting to use domestic technologies. So, so pushing forward ZTE, pushing forward Huawei, rather than buying from relying on U.S. technology, is going to be the sort of long-term shift on this one.